Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of the Shallow Water Adventures with Keith and Jeffrey. I'm Jeffrey. I'm Keith. And the rest of you are pretty lucky because today we put a sh we put a show together. Or are something to have service to put the show together. Boy, I hope so. Um, although I have been sure before and had worse things happen. So hopefully today everything is going to go really smoothly. We've uh, dumbed it all down. There are no microphones. There's only one camera. Like we're this is just bare bones. So hopefully it works out as smooth as we can get it. However, having said that, we don't have a mic. So if you are having trouble hearing us, let us know, and we will do our best to correct that. We're also on Ricky's phone today, which is an Android phone. Oh, not an Android. So if things go south, that's what I'm blaming. Okay. Very good. Uh, as usual, we are going to be taking everybody's questions, uh, so get those in as soon as possible. We'll try to answer as many as you can. We're here at headquarters, uh, and we've got some we've got some cool stuff for us today. Headquarters, you mean Mud Buddy headquarters? Mud Buddy headquarters, West Jordan, West Jordan, Utah. In fact, we're fancy enough. We've got lights here on the side of us that Keith is a little mad about. Jeffrey likes to be in the spotlight. I just like to stand back a little bit. My be, my be in the lights. <laughs> Like, um, very good. But before we do that, while we're waiting for everybody to hop on, um, Keith, what's been happening, man? What's, uh, what's going on? I don't know why. Just did a couple little more tests for the old Chrysler Keith last week. Uh, things are looking better. So we're still rolling on seven cylinders, hopefully. In a week or two after my next doctor appointment, we'll be running on all late. I don't know if that's a good thing in a Chrysler or a bad thing. But I think that's good. I think the work is going good. The guys are... We need to go over. Yes, they they are, though it is, it is picking up quite quickly, so don't hesitate on that. I say that all the time. Travis Madden is on, and he does say he can hear us fine. There is an echo. Yes, today there will be an echo, um, and we'll show you a little bit more why in just a little bit. But it is a little bit echoey in here, and I apologize. It's for a little warm in here, too. Right. I think you'll be okay for just a little while. We're not out no, are you going to overheat? No, no, no. no. He's going to overheat and fall down. Uh, you're holding on. Well, good. Well, I have, I have a... So what were you looking at? I know you got some cool stuff. Yes. So I had several times. I, uh, I, I got out I got out on the boat a little bit. Yes, I did a little bit of fishing um, last week, which was really, really excellent. Um, Smallmouth small mouth bass. That's what we did. I sure did. I sure did. I didn't count them because I know that that's not fair. You're not. If I'm not there. Yeah, you're not there. But no, I did. I caught quite a few actually. It was really fun. They're so they're so awesome that um, they fight so hard. Like generally here in Utah, we catch a lot of trout. And a trout, you know, especially the little ones up in the higher lakes, and they're kind of little. And you catch them, and they just kind of like keel over, and they're like, "Ah, you caught me. You take me." But those white bass, bass are really fun. But here's what it was: is that my dear sweet mother. You're fishing with mother. Some people might not have it, but I don't know. No, no, I don't have it. I would love to spend time out there. It really, no, no, it the really was people. awesome. Yes, yeah, so I took my mother out fishing. Uh, my dear sweet mother was like, yes, I will uh, I'll come with you. I was like, all right, let's go. Um, I have a couple of new, I bought a couple of new uh, fishing rods with a basic enclosed, oh, yeah. easy, easy cast, you know, rods that I bought for my nephews. <laughs> my, you know, the eight-year-old and the, the six-year-old is what they were for, nine-year-old. Um, she broke both of them. <laughs> yeah, oh, one 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 so you have yes. a little baby hair ball mess inside yes. of that one. Yes, that's, that's exactly that. what it was. She was just casting away. And I, I started, I caught three. Before she caught any, I was just like, oh, I'm working. we're pretty competitive at our house. So I was like, yes, I'm crushing it. And she caught the next three in a row. She just cast them out, bringing them in, back to back cast. I was like, oh man. And then the first one kind of snarled up. I was like, all right, all right, I can, I can fix this. So I pull out the other one. And she casts with it. It snarls that one pretty quick too. And I'm trying to take it apart. And I don't really know. I've never used those right. cheap ones like that. I've never done that really before. So I didn't know how to fix it. And it was just this huge mess. And I uh, was like, I'm, I'm sorry. You're done. You're out. And then I caught, I caught two more after that. <laughs> That's a win. You're done, Mom. Yeah, I was like, sorry, you're going to have to sit here and watch. And she did. She sat there and watched. And I won. Yes. So I, I, I got a little news for you. Okay. I went down and talked to Clint because Clint is yeah. 
like all hunter, all fish, yes. all whatever. The master of all things. Except three books on the tribe of Tiki. Oh, okay, good. Yes. Yes. Un unsnarled their oh, They were intense. I, I, it's just an interesting way of doing it. I'm so used to those spinner rocks. They're just so smooth and easy to oh, bend. Oh, 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 oh. No, no favor. It was actually kind of a costly trip. Like, I think we lost probably two or three lures. What do you mean we? You mean you? Yeah. Oh, sorry, no doubt. I mean, me is in the, the royal me. We, I don't know. Mom didn't catch a hat. That's kind of like I learned when I'm a bull fishing. We lost a couple of arrows. Now yes. I go with my buddies and they want to shoot. I ask for a $10 deposit. <laughs> yeah. Because when they forget to push the button on the release yes. on the it's reel, and when they pull it and let it go, and the, the arrow takes off and the that string is dangling, that's not 10 bucks. That's so now I, uh, I put on my hand and ask for a $10 rotation. So and smart. then if they, if they give me the bow and the uh, arrow back, I do a refund on the and we give them the $10 yes. yes. the deposit. Very, very smart. I mean, I'm not sure if I can do that with my kid here. I gotta figure that one out because they've lost this video fight. Wow. Very good. It's still fun. fun. But it was it was a really good time and I'm really I'm really happy I got a chance to uh, to do that. Do a little fishing and hang out with mom. A little fun fishing and hang out with mom. So that was good. That was that was my uh, my week. Um although I am gonna say I did so I got out there. I got out to the lake and I did not have I didn't have my hat. I didn't have either hat out there. Yeah, but I, I did have some luck. But I had in my car that I always keep in there. I have, I have a box of these our last, our last oh. box of brown hats that I keep in there to give out to you all when I meet you. Because we always say, like, if you see us out there, come and say hi. If you ever see this all, let me know. Right. Um, nobody ever does. No, right. <laughs> well, we need to do away. Well, we brought good things last year. Yes. No, we have. We have. Yeah. You're right. We gave away when we were at the duck call conversation yeah. the other day. The other. <laughs> um, but I have one of these, and I put it on, and it's my new favorite hat. <laughs> I, love, I actually really, really like the hat. Are you going to give up the flat for a round? No, not at all. But I am going to give a couple of these away today. They are really nice. I do like them. Uh, I, also I, have a, like that. I also have the Digi Camo on this. I, got, I, I just have like a few of these red that I find every once in a while in places around the, the office. So I've got one of these two that we can get. Yeah, this is the HDR, oh, yeah. the Mud Buddy HDR. These are rare commodities. Yes, so get, they, they are rare. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to give one of those away today. I have two of them. I have a series. I'm going to tell them. But for all of you, though, I, that are watching and are like, oh, yeah, giveaway. We've heard this before. I know we've had some trouble in the past, some uh, clerical issues, some uh, bureaucracies right. coming right. into place, some red tape, all sorts of things. I've kind of happened, but I am taking this bowl by the horns. What we're going to do today, I brought my notepad down with me today, so when I give something away, I'm going to be able to write that down and get it socked away in my in my to-do list automatically. But we also need you guys, when you win something, there's a, usually a link at the top. You click on that link, fill out the information of where we need to send it and what you want, and we'll get it to you. If you don't fill out that link, it's hard for us to yes, find you. I should have told you this earlier, but I'm doing away with the link. No more link. Don't worry about the link here, anymore. Here is why. <laughs> this is why I've got to have my notepad. Because there are always some, there's always a few, who write in and are like, oh, I want this. And, and they did they did it. And so we have to, uh, it makes us end up going back and watching through the whole thing again, making sure that we've got the right thing and all of this. And it, so it takes a lot of time. And, a lot of it. So now I'm just going to do it right now, right with me. This moment, there will never be a question. Of who so you're just going to put who they want. Yep, I'm going to write their How name down. Going to get you there yes. Shipping information. Um, they will have to PM me. PM. Yes. Not PMS. Not PMS. Not PMS. Right now. Good. So I think that is all. Am I missing any crucial news and updates? I'm trying to think if there was anything there like was that. There's something that you talked about when you did the turbo. There's a big show in Louisiana. Oh, yes. And I don't know any more information. Now, maybe Travis or Blade, if you're watching. Yeah. If you guys know where that show is, where the turbo will be in Louisiana, yes. you can post that or shoot us a message and we'll shout it yeah. out. Or even uh, uh, check out BPS. They'll probably have some info on it as well. And 
of our buddy Dustin watching, and you know that Dustin, shoot us a message. Yes, Dustin, Dustin, OB design. OB we design. love those guys. Um, yeah, um, check check them out as well. They'll probably have info, but that turbo is going to be there. Yes. <laughs> turbo. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Okay. Go back to me. Um, did you watch um, did you watch a little catch earlier last week? Yes, I did. I will have it for a moment. No, no, no. no, no. Oh, yesterday. yesterday. Sorry, not last week. Sorry. To me, that's yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday, I watched some of it. Okay, so if you didn't see that episode, I want you to go on and watch it. Because right at the end, there was some things mentioned that if we could get, this is what it was, if we could get a certain amount of shares on that video, that our good buddy Jay Paul, and you know me, I'm Team Jay Paul, would get a mud butt, or an XL Boats tattoo. And I don't think he has any tattoos. I don't think so he does. would be a first one for him. So I am feeling like that's something we should maybe help out. I would enjoy something like that. Maybe not this time, but some other challenge. Something to do and make that happen for him. So what do our guys do? Just go and watch their show? Do they yes. That? Share it? Or right something? now, yes. So go on that video and share it. So they go to the Excel Boat page. Go to Excel Boat's Facebook page. Click on that video and share it. Sure. Share it as many times as you can. Share it with everybody. Like you said if you got to like 200. It was like 200. Maybe it was 100. Come on, guys. <laughs> but I don't care how many times you share it. Share it. He yes. needs a big fake account. Needs, I'm thinking this would be really awesome. You know, I worked really hard and had a lot of help from all of you guys getting Jay Paul to wear the flat brim right. hat. That was very satisfying for me, okay. like in my soul. So I don't know. If Jay Paul was supposed to be on, but I know he kind of had an appointment right before right before we started. So I don't know if he got away um, from that and is watching. But I'm thinking this this is my new goal is to make that happen. Just All right. So, Jay Paul get a tattoo. Jay Paul tattoo. You know, that's the problem. They're going to throw something back at us and hope you will really stand <laughs> and get a tattoo. I, I, Maybe we can get Ricky to do it because he's got a couple. Yeah, he's, he's not afraid. Just a he couple. He's got a good friend that's a tattoo artist. Jay Paul's watching. Jay is Paul. he on? Okay. Hey, Jay Paul. Uh, Team Jeremy here. Oh, jeez. I like Jay Paul. Hey, you do. Guy. I'm all about you. All right, let's see. I'm going to do some shout outs here as well. Um, we got Monica Harris on. Hey, Monica, how's it going? We got John Walton. John Chance is on. Favorite hat with the pet bill and all. There is still hope for you, Chipper. I know. <laughs> Listen, we, I, I really we don't care. As long look. as it covers my bald head when I'm out fishing or out in the sun, I don't care if it's a flat brim, a round brim, big round. I don't care as long as I don't burn. It doesn't matter to me what it is. Awesome. We got, you see, uh, we got Frank King on. We got Corey Arndt is on. Uh, Rick Hillcox is on. Hey, Rick, how's it going? No, no Team Jeffrey? I have not seen no any Team, Team Jeffrey. Jeffrey yet. Oh, man, what's up with that? I don't know. I don't know where all my, where all my Jeffs are. They'll be on here in a minute, I'm sure. Um, but very good. But we're happy to have you all on. I do have um, a good comment from Corey says, what's up guys? What are we talking about today? Today? Today! today. Well, we're kind of in the part of the shop yes. that we call the paint booth shop. We what are in paint the paint booth. And trust me, when I came here 12 years ago, we did not have the booths. We did not have anything. We were spraying and painting in the main shop with some <laughs> curtains around you. And then we got this small little paint booth, right? and, and, and kind of had a developer there. Now we've got a full blown paint shop with everything that we need. And Ricky was one of my painters when I was a shop manager. Right. And I loved what him and uh, Juan, when they used to do a shadow graph pattern. Oh, and yeah. They would, they would shoot one color, solid color, and they would use rattle cans and make little lines, like reeds. And you would always hear them over there, whack, whack. They were whacking their fingers on the motor. They've got tape all over their fingers. There was blood everywhere. Is that how they painted? Like that's how they, that like that's how they smeared that paint on? That's how they smeared it with that. So we've come a long way. So we're in the paint shop. We're supposed to be talking to our painter, Kevin. Yes. But I don't know Kevin he, uh, he abandoned us real quick. So we're going to bring him on in just a second. But well, Ricky's going to go grab him. We're going to have a little conversation with Kevin, our, our painter. He is 
incredible at what he does. Yes, he does. Um, and we're really excited to talk to him today. So everybody get your questions out and ready for him uh, because we're going we're gonna to do that. But we do love it in here. It is a really great facility. He's going to tell us a little bit more about it. Um, but we're, we are really lucky to be here. Yes. I was just thinking that you like Ricky ever paint. I'm surprised he didn't burn the building down. No, we didn't let him. He didn't have a course thing. That's when he was first here. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he, he had to let him get to that. He, he was young. He graduated nice. and moved up the, the chain. First he started out painting. Yeah. And, you know, he, he, you know it's, everybody enjoys painting for about a year or two. But it, you know, we, it, it takes its toll a year or two. Uh, <laughs> maybe, like, you know, a lot of brain cells go, I don't know. I, yes, I know. And back in those days, we didn't use a water-based type paint, so uh, the shop would get really fumy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we have graduated a lot, and maybe this is where all the yeah, Optifade magic happens right here. We can't tell you all the secrets about Optifade. No, we're going to be very careful. We can, but we can't tell you everything. But we can talk about the hypergrass, the nap gears, the max scores, those kind of things. But the super stuff, guys, you can ask what you want. We'll tell you what we can, and that's all we can do. All right, so without further ado, Everybody's big warm welcome for our paint master Kevin. Oh, <laughs> yep, right there in the middle, right here. Hey, hey, hey guys, welcome. Hi. Welcome to the shallow water. It's good to it's have you here. It's good to be. <laughs> no, I don't see any water. I feel like we need to have an effect with tear and applause and all that. <laughs> maybe, maybe <laughs> some confetti coming up. by. Yeah. That's more technical <laughs> issues that we can run into. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but welcome. This is this your first time on the show? Yeah. Good. Well, it's really good to have you with us. Um, everybody, now is the time to get those questions rolling in. I'm going to be on my phone. Don't think I'm trying to ignore you. Oh, no, no. I'm going to facilitate our uh, questions with, with everybody out in the big old wide world. A couple of things. Hey, Kevin, how long have you been here? Uh, just a little over a year. Just a little over a year. Yeah. And we hired you to strictly do camels. Camels. Paint camels. Watch. Paint. Because that's what you've done most of your whole life is yeah. some type of painting. Yeah, <laughs> some type, of some type of painting. Yeah, I've done it uh, well, several decades. Uh, off and on, not still. You can't yeah, several decades. You're only like 45 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only 40, so you can't be much older than I am. <laughs> anyway, I've been doing it for a little while, and uh, um, I came in here with a little bit of experience, but it's been a burden for a while. Especially these new uh, debates, uh, where they're really fun. Right? They're a lot of fun <laughs> once, you get, once you get them down. Sure. sure. Yeah. Um, very good. So before here, what what painting experience did you have? Oh wow. Um, commercial and residential painting, uh, commercial art, and sign sign painting. Uh, I've painted anything from Harley Davidsons to uh, uh, to hospitals. <laughs> or at least a hospital. Oh, there you go. The name of the hospital. episode right here. Very yeah. that's, that's excellent. What would you say has been maybe your your favorite thing that you've ever painted and the most challenging thing you've ever painted? Uh, this, this is a this is, <laughs> uh, the most challenging, the hardest thing I ever painted was uh, was a new LDS temple in Montana. Wow. I was there for nine months. Uh, we had a crew of about six of us, I was the assistant foreman on the crew. And very meticulous, very difficult painting. <laughs> you think that? Uh, interior, exterior. Interior and exterior both. Uh, wow. You know, we did, did quite a bit up there. That's impressive. We, we were painting solid maple terrain inside the building. Yeah. Uh, seven and eight coats. For those of you that who don't know, if you've not been in an area with an LDS temple, they're like the castles that you yes, see there for that. The Mormon Church, they, uh, they're giant, beautiful, macro buildings. So that's a, that would be a job. It was a nice job. So is hard. that your favorite or the hardest? That was the hardest. Hardest. <laughs> there you go. Okay, your favorite thing. Uh, I'm going to have to say this. This. Sewing camouflage motors, mud right. motors, uh, is a kick. Uh, we, uh, we, we try and we match our XL bows. And uh, that's that's a challenge, trying to get the camel motor to look exactly like the boat. And uh, it's been fun at the same time. <laughs> so <Some of> these, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah, a little fun, a, a little, lot of work. A little fun, a lot of work. <laughs> but um, uh, 
Yeah, I'm going to say this is probably one of the funnest, funnest painting jobs yeah. I've ever, you know, ever done. So, so yeah. Good. All right. I'm going to check on some questions here. Sure. See so, if anybody has I'm going to ask a question. Go ahead. How many camels a week do you And I know it varies because wow. right now it's a little slow. Yeah. But come 30 days from now, yeah. you could paint how many camels a week. Oh. Uh, we can do probably three a day. Three, four, yeah, four. With one guy back here. And that's going like crazy. Because uh, there's yeah. a, I mean, there's a lot of detail. Absolutely. I mean, when it comes out like this, this is beautiful. But what goes into making it look like this takes a long time. Yeah, there's the, the prep, preparation process. And, uh, that's the cleaning, the sanding, the masking with the motor. Uh, we wipe them down with solvents. And after it's all masked and cleaned and prepped, then we do the base coat. And it's a, it's a military grade uh, enamel we use. And uh, it's, it's a waterborne product. You mentioned that earlier. You've got away from the fuming yeah. stuff, <laughs> yeah. the toxic stuff. And we, it's more environmentally friendly and painter friendly. And painter friendly. <laughs> yeah, brain, brain damage. Brain. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. That explains back in here. That explains a few things. Yeah. It does. It, it's starting to make sense. Brings a lot of things to light. Nobody like, told me know. about that. But yeah, the newer products we're using for the base coat are just uh, they're excellent. They they use them on, on uh, military hardware, right? Tanks, artillery. It's a very durable product and uh, stick stands. Yeah, right. it's, it's quite a quite a thing, quite a product. So we just don't roll the motor off the line, shove it back here, <laughs> you wipe it down and spray everything. So it, there's, there's, there's there's the detail. All, all the crucial components of the motor and the drive system are, are, are masked off and, and covered up. We, we use a let's, let's, get, yeah, let's get closer and can you yeah. demonstrate on this one kind of every piece? Because there are quite a few pieces that get taped oh, off sure. on yeah. these motors. Um, all all the, the dash readout, the ignition switch, we have the uh, kill switch down here that's masked. Everything, uh, the clamp handles, um, spark plug wires. All these stickers are masked. We like to uh, leave the stickers in place and then cover them up and then I like to clear coat them after I'm finished with the camel. Uh, switches, the anodes back here, that's crucial to keep those clean. Uh, they have to make metal to metal contact. But a lot of these areas are, are masked off. Uh, and uh, the exhaust ports, uh, wow, Every, everything from the dipstick to the oil fill. Uh, there's quite a few little details to mask off on the engine. And then, like I said, everything's uh, thoroughly sanded, blown off, and then uh, salt washed. So, percentage of time, how much, what is the percentage of time on prep work before anything starts to go on? I'd say it's about one third. About a third, 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 third of your time on a motor. Exactly, oh. just preparing. Just for it. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's intense. All right, I've got a question here. Um, this is from Corey. Aaron. Yeah. Corey, you're going to have to correct me one day. I need to like, phonetically spell that out so I, because I'm sure I say it wrong. Corey Art. Um, he says, Do you know how to do 3D camouflage paint patterns on boats and shallow water motors? Tell us about your 3D painting skills. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, that's, that's just kind of a trick that we learned with our stencils, our, 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 our registered pad extensions. It's a, it's, a, it's a simple trick we do. It's a, an easy way to do it is set your stencil, go ahead and spray a first coat. Right. Then you slightly move your stencil, just ever so slightly so it's off uh -huh. its original position. And then you highlight with a different color. And that will bring out a good deal. Um, I don't know if we can, uh, here's, here's a little bit of a review look over here. You can spot it in different areas. Uh, here's back on the, on the skeg, it's, uh, excuse me, the cap plate. There's a little bit of a 3D look going there. And like I said, we'll put our stencils on, do our base coat, and then we slightly move the stencil and do a secondary coat. That will achieve, uh, with a little practice, <laughs> it's a, a 3D, a 3D effect. I like that. A little bit of practice. <laughs> a little, a little bit. Just a couple of times. Yeah. 
But uh, that's a kick. That, that really is learning that process right. and, and, and putting it into practice. This is the marsh. This is the marsh. Uh, yeah, yeah. the fade marsh. Yeah. And it, it's a colorful one. It's more. This is our most popular one, the marsh. I would say so. I would say so. Yes. Uh, absolutely. Our second would be Niagara grass. Niagara grass. That's yeah. a very popular And a lot simpler to paint than the yeah. other things. Yeah. This less colors, less exactly. Just yeah, this has less than half the colors than this one has. Right. This has several different colors. Yeah. But our timber has the most. I think it has about nine different colors. Wow. On one one moment. This is uh, about eight, I think. So. And uh, <laughs> back in the old days, the shadow grass was base color <laughs> and three different rattle pins and a lot of. A lot of blood and tears <laughs> from wiping your fingers. Sweat, blood, and tears. Uh, okay, uh, from Frank Willard, what type of clear coat is used on the motors to keep them from getting all scratched up? Well, we just use a, uh, just a single stage uh, clear coat. It's, uh, it's uh, a satin finish. Uh, a lot of times, uh, if you're doing your own, you can, you can buy a, uh, just a, a spray can of an exterior rated clear coat. Right. And we like to use a satin finish on ours. And it's, like I said, it's just a single stage uh, product. It's, uh, it's easy to use, easy to clean up. And uh, we, uh, like I said, it's a uh, satin. Yeah. It's something you can up probably any hardware store. Exactly. Or big box store type of uh, sure. uh, paint or uh, sure. any, any Any good quality exterior rated a clear coat will help tremendously. It brings out the colors uh, and it also protects the entire finish, the entire uh, but that's, that's important. I think the clear coat is oh, yeah. one of the most important, the final step. And uh, it, it just makes it really come along. And is that because you know when you spray the clear coat on, it's yeah. rolling out the door? Yeah. yeah. I know yeah, yeah, this is this is wonderful. It's going, <laughs> and I'm off to the next two or three or whatever. Yeah, I, exactly. Okay, great. So, um, Corey, Corey, Art, I'm going to give you uh, for your comment one of these round. This hat in particular, my new favorite hat, um, Corey. So that is yours, Corey. Send me a, a PM on this channel, and I will. Uh, We'll get, we'll get your info and get that sent out to you. And Frank Williams as well. Frank, I'm going to send you the uh, the Digi. The Digi? The Mud Buddy Digi. Digi. Oh, I wanted that's that hot, man. Hat. I know, that's, that's the right one. Frank, that's the right one. That is for you, Frank. That's the, the Digi. I'm right there now, right now. So I know, there'll be no question. <laughs> that hat is so red, none of us have it. Nobody has it. <laughs> I wouldn't say none of us have it. Well, I have never seen Well, you don't have it. <laughs> it's one of those People ones that like, where they're so that? rare, it's up on the hat shelf. <laughs> yeah. That's good. all I'm going to say. That's good stuff. All right. Continuing on. Also, everybody, you can ask questions about the actual motors, too. Keith will answer some of your questions. Um, you should be thinking about getting ready, getting your motor prep, getting ready for the season. It is, it is coming up so fast. In fact, I just watched the first, I, I have to sneak peek. We sponsored the Grind Water Powder. Right. I think their first episode just dropped either this week or last week. Was, week. was it last week? So if you haven't checked that out, go and see uh, the first episode of The Grind. It was awesome. Really, really awesome. It's a great episode, but man, it just, it just gets you in the mood. It, it does, but then you, you look at your side, you're off. It's, so it's 92 hard. degrees. It's 92 <laughs> degrees. You're sweating like a dog. I, know. I was actually mm -hmm. going through one of our videos from last year when we went with Dave. And I was like, oh, this, that was so fun. And I was like, we were so cold. <laughs> And it is so hot out here right now. <laughs> but it we'll is. We'll gradually work into the cold. Yes. yes. It'll come just like the summer did from cold to hot, hot to cold. The, mud, it's like the Utah way. It is. Yep. Okay. It's just wait. It'll change. It'll change. Rick Hillercost asks, and I don't know how much you can say on this, but he says, what type of paint is used on these motors? We use, uh, well, it, it, on the camouflage colors, it, it's an alkyd enamel, an exterior rated alkyd enamel. Uh, we used both uh, conventional spray and we've used also spray cans. So we do a combination of both. Um, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an alkyd, most of what we're using now is an alkyd oil-based uh, 
freight I made. And it's a, it, it is a flat finish. And that is a, another reason the clear coat is so effective. It, it takes a flat finish and really gives it some depth and brings the color out. Very nice. It's also confused. But uh, the outfit, yeah, the outfit is uh, probably yeah, that's about it. That's it. That's about it. It's got a big. Yeah, Josh Hendricks says, if it's not painted by a man in overalls, it's just not done right. <laughs> that I love said. that comment. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell everybody. And this is Kate's <laughs> Josh. Daily attire. Daily attire is his overalls. He wore his good ones today. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, but uh, yeah. Bad shirt, yeah, I'm not so I have got for you, I've got a Mallard Madness DVD for you, <laughs> Josh Hendricks. And so, thanks, Josh. Yeah, Ricky just brought up something, too. All these motors, before we get them to the paint shop, they've all been powder coated by a company that we have local here in Utah. So, they have a military powder coating, yeah. main base color that's yeah. on all of our motors, the brown, and then we shoot over the top of it. So it's got a great, strong powder coat, powder coat base, and then we spray on top of it. We don't sand it. We sand it down basically just the motor, and to get all the plastic a little bit scuffed up so the paint stuff sticks better. Other than that, we don't do any much sanding on the main parts at all. Some of the bare metals, uh, we have a stainless plate under here. Uh, also stainless in the back that we clean naturally. Right. But this uh, industrial enamel that we're using, uh, it, it has great adhesion. It sticks to all metals, aluminum, stainless steel, and prime ferrous metals or regular steel. Yeah. It's prime. Um, but plastics, it's amazing the adhesion on the plastic parts of the engine. Because that was always one of the things that back in the old days when we were doing this, we were trying flexible plastic. We were trying to yeah. get and yeah. some of them did a little bit better than the others, but yep. if they don't hold like they hold now, no, no. they've got the chemistry down. They like it. Fine. Okay, Rob Rasmussen asks, um, are they all painted or do you use hydrographic film on any part of any department? All painted. They're all hand painted. Every every motor is a custom motor that comes from the shop. Yeah. yeah. No two of them design. No, but they're really slow. Yeah. 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 I'm thinking about signing them somewhere. Smiley face, maybe <laughs> not sure. <laughs> one of our old like Banksy, we use a little Banksy stamp on them. There you go. We had one of our old painters. He was signing underneath the base plate. Oh, he yeah. would put his initials on. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, when the motor came back or whatever for repair or the local guy, he was first thing he would do would come back and <laughs> look under the base plate and see if he painted. Which what we should do is such a great idea. We should put a little shallow water symbol on one of them in somewhere. And whoever gets it can redeem it for, for a nice big prize. Hey, there you go. Can I write that down? I should write that down. Write that down because we won't remember when you should. What are you guys talking about? I did it on the camel. Uh -huh. It'll be a jump in the fun. Yeah, yeah. It'll be hard to find. You'll never yeah. find yourself with a shallow water motor. Sticker. Sticker on it. Or something. Well, I don't know. I'm going to decide what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah no, no, no. I'm going to have to think about that. That, that, that would be fun. And we'll let Kevin hide it because he'll probably have a better idea. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hide it. Any, any painted finish. 
uh, some ceramics know that uh, uh, most paint, if it's protected from the from the UVs and uh, the heat of the sun, uh, also the ultraviolet, well, and uh, in the infrared, uh, it will stand up a lot better you know, over the years. It will retain its kind of short. Good. All right. Any other? Uh, just just a quick comment. Yeah. The Kevin brought up when he when he when he masks and tapes everything up before he paints. And if you paint your own motor home, which that's what you want to do, do it great. Make sure you cover these important serial numbers for Mud Buddy, the power code number from Briggs, and uh, keep those. It only takes a minute to run a piece of tape over, cut them out with a utility knife, and then that way, when you call and say, "Hey, is my motor under warranty?" If you don't have this number, it sure makes it hard to figure out when it was sold, who we sold it to, and the time frame. So make sure you keep that number. It's a good, it's a good idea when you buy a new motor or if you have one now, take a picture of that, put it on your phone so when you call and Keith or Enrique or Mike and say, hey, what's your serial number? You can pull it up on your camera, look it up, tell us what it is, and that helps us out tremendously. But if you pay over those, Make it tough. <laughs> you make it really tough. It's going to be a challenge. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. Awesome. So, all right. Well, we're going to probably shut it down there. Thank you, Kevin, it's so sure. much for joining us today. That has been a blast. If you continue to have questions, um, go ahead and write those out. We will sure. try and answer those over the next little bit. Um, I do apologize for the background noise. I know it's been a little bit hard to hear um, because they've got the air circulating up until we don't all S68 in here. Yeah, and, and that too, part of that noise is our uh, big air compressor yeah. that's inside this room, which is right next door. So yeah. and it's got to have ventilation. And yes, it's got to be ventilated. We shut it down as far as we can, but we can't shut it down anymore. No. No, no, no. So I do appreciate your patience with that. Um, we are going to be back probably out on the water next week. Uh, that'll be Wednesday at 3 o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Um, I have no idea what, where or what that will be. <laughs> And as soon as I know, you, you will know. And I'll, uh, I'm I'll sure it will be very exciting. <laughs> yep. uh, good. Okay. Until then, uh, thank you everybody so much for watching, and we'll see you right back here next week in the shallow water. Take care, everybody.